Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 28 for Wednesday, January 14th, 2015. Twitter. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by SmartThings. SmartThings lets you monitor, control, and automate your home from wherever you are using your smartphone. Right now, SmartThings is offering Android App Arena listeners 10% off any home security or solution kit and get free shipping in the U.S. when you go to smartthings.com slash twit and use the offer code twit10 at checkout. Hello and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Been meaning to tackle a vast and challenging category of apps on the show since it launched last summer. And thanks to the new design language of Lollipop, I finally have more reason to do so. Developers right now are scrambling to update their apps to the new material design approach. And Twitter apps have been converting swiftly. But Twitter developers, kind of in a unique situation. Back in 2012, Twitter made a controversial change to its API rules that limited third-party developers to a certain number of tokens for each Twitter app that they create in an effort to, you know, take more control over their service and monetize more effectively. Basically, instead of allowing third parties to develop clients freely that anyone could openly install and use to access Twitter's social network like they had done in the past, this would place a cap on how successful those third-party clients could become. The token limit set by Twitter was 100,000 users, which may sound like a large number, but when you consider that one person might actually be using five separate Twitter accounts on their app, uh, that eats up five tokens right there. In essence, this means that any developer that's willing to spend their time crafting a well-designed Twitter app has a ceiling to the amount of users that can buy and use that app. Personally, I'm surprised that any developer is willing to move forward developing an app for Twitter services, but at the same time, I'm happy because, well, I'm just not a huge fan of Twitter's official app. Third-party Twitter apps often add extra features. Beyond that, with so many out there, users have a choice as to which apps speak their own design and operational language. Three third-party Twitter apps have been all the rage over the past year or so, and they've all updated to newer versions since Lollipop hit a few months back. So it seems like the perfect time to compare them against each other in this week's Best of the Best. Let's start with the app that I've been using to satisfy my own daily fix for Twitter on my Nexus 6 for a few months now. It's called Talon for Twitter. Talon released its official material design redux a few months back, and I've been using it ever since, an upgrade from my previous go-to, which was Plume. And I was happy to make the switch. Talon touches on most of the material design notes that you expect to find in today's current crop of apps. There's that floating action button. In this case, it, that's the way that you initiate a new post to your Twitter followers. One thing to note here is Talon's options for creating drafts of your tweets as well as scheduling tweets for posting in the future. Very cool feature. That might be easy to overlook in the composition window, but that makes Talon incredibly versatile for the busy Twitter user. There are plenty of options for adding images, finding users, and selecting trending hashtags on the fly. Now, going back to the home stream, everything is bright and large, as I have it set right now anyways, but another of Talon's features is its customization points. In the UI settings, you can dial in a number of colored themes, and those options are actually doubled when you turn on the dark theme. You can keep photos inside the stream or boot them out if you want to clean things up a bit. And aside from just the look of the UI, there are a ton of settings for controlling what information gets synced and how often, including Talon Poll, which streams Twitter content in real time thanks to its push notifications. You can actually get notifications for favorites, retweets, and new followers if you so choose. There's tweet marker support if you want your stream to pick up where you left off every time you open the app. And you can think of this as a bookmark for where you were the last time you were in the app. Settings for notifications, the in-app browser, 
managing mutes of accounts you wish not to see, and finally, memory tweaks that can improve your performance and better yet, allow you to back up and restore your settings for future use. Now, settings are one thing, but a good Twitter app is something you're going to be using all the time, and Talon shines in daily use. It's responsive when switching between feeds, swiping from the extreme left, brings you to the nice side menu of all of your favorite Twitter functions, and this bell right here brings you to the interactions list so you can catch all of the activity with your account in real time, including who just followed you and what posts are being favorited most. Oh, another tip. To customize your streams, which is something that I look to do with every Twitter app I use so I can take my Android news list that I've created and have it as a stream I can swipe to, all you have to do is go into settings and then into main pages and drawer. That enables you to tailor your own combo of six swipeable pages for use inside the app on the fly. I missed this for a while, and I'm really happy I found out how to do it. You can find Talon for yourself for $3.99 in the Play Store. Next up is an app that literally just a few days ago released its long-awaited material design version. Falcon Pro 3 is the next version of the popular Twitter client right off the bat. I was impressed by its graphical approach. No, there is no floating action button, but there are plenty of animations throughout the app that morph and shift as you use different functions. Those kinds of visual touches are refreshing and don't seem to slow down the experience through normal use, and that's thanks to the code being specifically optimized for Lollipop. Conversations are shown in a nice conversation view so you can keep up on the full thread in one column. Now, swiping in from the far left shows your account and a list of the latest interactions with your account and your posts on Twitter. To create a post, you just tap that message icon in the top right and you're given a box to write in, as well as instant scrolling access to the latest photos in your camera roll, which makes it easy to tweet out that picture without having to delve into the gallery app to pick it. But you're only given the latest 20 pictures. Beyond that, there currently doesn't seem to be any way to pick images outside of those listed there. Which brings me to the current Achilles heel of Falcon Pro 3. Don't get me wrong, I love where it's headed, and I think the visual representation is super engaging. The main problem right now anyways, a mere three days after its official release, is that there are still key features missing from the app with little to no explanation about those omissions before you drop money on it. You can't delete your tweets if you misfire or say something embarrassing. And even more importantly, there's currently no ability to monitor or post a direct message. Now, up until yesterday, there also weren't settings options, which meant no notification options and update frequency management. But thankfully, that was added swiftly after the app's official release. And that gives me hope that the developer will bring the other missing functions to Falcon Pro 3 quickly. However, it does feel like I've bought a beta version and not knowing that until after I made the in-app purchase of $3.99 for the full version of the app felt a little wrong. Now that $3.99 in-app purchase allows you to sync one Twitter ID with the app. If you want to add more Twitter accounts, that will cost an additional $1.99 per Twitter account. The developer says this is merely a way for him to work around Twitter's restrictive stance on limiting tokens for third-party Twitter apps. And the app is free to start and includes a limited number of demo lists that you can use prior to purchase to witness how it works. If you like what you see, you'll pay $3.99 from inside the app. That's Falcon Pro 3 in the Play Store. Now, finally, I put a call out on Twitter and the Android App Arena subreddit for a crowd favorite third option. And resoundingly, you all chose Phoenix for Twitter. So let's take a look at Phoenix. Right off the bat, Phoenix brings a bright sense of style. And yes, because apparently I'm obsessed with finding them in material design apps, there's the floating action button that, like Talon, actually brings you to a place to create a new public post to your Twitter followers. You get all the bonus options to go along with that, from photo picking, to snapping a picture, to the at and hashtag options that auto-populate as you begin to type with them, making it easy to pull in trending topics and your followed Twitter users complete with a mini profile pic, which is a nice touch. Similar to the previous two apps, you can swipe left and right to navigate between your preferred feeds. 
If you wish to play around with these and tailor them for yourself, just go into settings and then down to navigation where you'll find the sections page. There you can add, remove, and sort any of the sections that you desire. Speaking of options, there are some nice flexible tweaks in here. First, Appearance, which gives you a sample tweet and a ton of parameters for making your timeline your own. Themes, the color of links, font sizes, font types, how media shows inside the timeline. But don't forget to restart the app to refresh those changes when you're done. Syncing options enable you to determine how often Phoenix pulls new content. And there is a real-time option there as well. There's tweet marker support for bookmarking your Twitter browsing. And plenty of notification options so you aren't buzzed every single time one of the people you follow happens to post something. Or heck, maybe you are because you can get a notification for account activity like retweets and new followers as well as everything else if you choose. Swiping in from the far left gives you that all too familiar list of Twitter account related sections so you can jump around. Particularly useful if you haven't added these to your main screen for easy swiping. And there's a mute filter that allows you to specify terms that when used in a post won't be passed along to your feed. In all, I'm really happy you asked me to take a closer look at Phoenix, because yeah, it's pretty great. Check out Phoenix for Twitter for $4.49 in the Play Store. All right, three fantastic third-party Twitter apps to choose from this week, and they all bring their own special style and mix of functionality. And if there's a category that everyone is split on when asked, What's the best? Twitter clients absolutely ranks at the top as one that really depends on your own personal taste. You're likely to try a bunch before you finally settle on the one that works for you. So I showed off three of the best in the category, uh, it seems anyways, Talon for Twitter, Falcon Pro 3, and Phoenix for Twitter. Before this episode, I've been a daily user of Talon, and after recording these reviews, I have to say, I've kept them all installed, which is totally overkill, obviously, but mainly because I had a really hard time deciding which one I'd use going forward. Talon is great and stable, bringing tons of extra features, and a great traditional interpretation of material design. Falcon Pro 3 is off to an incredible start, and if it was packing all of the, in my opinion, necessary features for a Twitter client like Direct Message, I'd probably start using it as my daily driver. And once they're added in, I'll you know have to reconsider switching back to it. But I didn't expect this. I have to award Phoenix for Twitter with the top spot this week. It's elegant, feature-rich, and customizable. But it was a total toss-up for me between Phoenix and Talon. And I suppose what this really means is that competition is good because we have some great options to choose from. I haven't even scratched the surface of the total number of third-party Twitter clients in today's show. So dive in and check them out for yourself. Let me know what I've missed. You can email me at arena at twit.tv. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. That would be Smart Things. Let me tell you about CNET's highest rated smart home system. That is Smart Things, allowing you to monitor, control, and automate your home from anywhere using your smartphone, using little components like this. It's the Smart, uh, smart Things hub that connects to your home network and everything dials into this and connects into this, controlling everything in your smart home. Now your lights, locks, Thermostats and home security are all connected through a single app. You don't need a different app for every category. There's intuitive controls that you can set to uh, you know, the rules on your smart home through the free iOS, Android, and Windows phone apps. With smart things, you can customize the way your smart devices talk to each other. So now you can tap good night on your phone and the lights will actually turn off, the thermostat will adjust, and the doors will lock automatically. Set your lamps to brighten each morning at sunrise or when you wake up, uh, even even keep your home protected. There's smart things, home security, motion detection, water detection, and more. You can even you know turn it on so that your speakers will broadcast a dog barking if there's motion outside of the house. Really cool stuff. Set a camera to take a series of photos when unwanted motion or entry is detected. Have your doors recognized when you're close and automatically unlock as you walk up. Honestly, if this is, we're just scratching the surface here. There's so many ways you can customize your Smart Things home. Now, Smart Things was also named CES 2015 Editor's Choice Award in Time Magazine. Uh, it's listed there in that article. Uh, pretty awesome stuff. So you know they're onto something pretty good here. If this sounds good to you, to get started setting up your smart home right now, 
all you had to do was uh, you know check out Smart Things. They're actually offering for Android app arena listeners 10% off any home security or solution kit and get free shipping in the US when you go to smartthings.com slash twit. Use the offer code twit10 at checkout. And there you go. Thank you for your support of Android App Arena Smart Things. You got something good going on here. I really like the hub and all of the components. All right, finally, I fully realize that it's entirely possible that the next game has been featured at one point on you know, nearly every show on the Twit Network by now. But dang it, if it isn't super addictive and an all-around good time. And it's finally available on the Play Store officially. So let's play around in this week's Hot to Trot. What's hot to trot this week really should be what's hot to hop. And I actually took this game into the arena a few weeks ago on All About Android, but that was when the game was only released in the Amazon App Store. Crossy Road finally made it to the Play Store a few weeks later, so it's time to recommend it here because it's a ton of fun and super addictive. I can't stop playing it. Think of an endless game of Frogger. And you're kind of close to what Crossy Road is all about. Every game is different in that each stretch of roads, railroads, lily pads, floating logs, and patches of grass is generated at random every time you play. The graphics are blocky, but totally endearing. You start hopping in any direction by simply tapping anywhere on the screen. That moves you forward, or swiping left and right moves you to either side. You move your character, which by default is a chicken, across the road you know, to get to the other side. Then you continue moving forward, trying to dodge all those cars, keeping yourself from falling into the water and getting slammed into by a fast moving train. On top of that, if you don't move fast enough, you'll be swept away by a bald eagle and suddenly it's game over. That's the price you pay for being unresponsive. Also, if you get too close to either side of the play field, you'll be swept off screen and that's it. People have compared Crossy Road to the game everyone loves to hate, Flappy Bird, for its frantic pace and difficulty, but there's something incredibly endearing about Crossy Road. Sure, there's the nostalgia that anyone who grew up playing Frogger realizes instantly, but starting up a new game is such a quick occurrence that it makes it easy to go, eh, just one more time, before getting back to off-screen life. And it's not impossible, either, so you feel like you're accomplishing something, at least. You do collect coins over time that will enable you to unlock new characters, and if you wish, you can drop a buck to purchase them outright. But this is in-app purchases done right. There's no pressure, no unfair disadvantage if you don't pay up. It's great fun either way. You can find Crossy Road in the Play Store for free. I apologize if you're kind of crossy roaded out, but we're only talking about it a lot because it's actually a lot of fun and uh, just a great game. So go check it out. That does it for this week. Uh, big thanks to those of you who've emailed your favorite apps and new app categories to me at arena at twit.tv. I always have a pool of ideas to pick from uh, for the show, and I really do appreciate that. Uh, and a big thank you uh, to Tom Gerke, who actually manages the Android App Arena subreddit, which you can find at androidapparena.reddit.com. He's helped a bunch with the style and function of the page uh, since we created it last summer. And again, I really appreciate that. It's not like we're paying him, so he's just doing it out of out of uh, you know love of doing it, I guess. So thank you, Tom. It's a great resource. Head on over, check it out for yourself. You can follow me on Google Plus for my random and sometimes app-related ramblings. I also host a live viewing party of each week's episode where I'll be on set to answer any questions you might have about the apps in the show or really anything about Android in general. Normally, this happens at 4.30 p.m. Pacific on Wednesdays, but next week is a bit different due to a scheduling change. So if you'd like to be part of the live taping, you'll find me there a bit earlier at 11 a.m., Pacific recording the show, and I'd love to see you. That happens right after Tech News Today. And then we'll be back to the normal taping schedule the following week. Uh, and of course, if it's all just too confusing, have no fear, because each week's episode will appear every Wednesday evening at twit.tv slash arena and in the feeds. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena.